Still talking football on the Sportsmax Zone, Jamaica's squad for the Gold Cup, which begins on Saturday, was announced on Monday. And as usual, with any reggae boy squad, there were some disagreements among the public. Two of the more popular ones were the lack of Jamaica Premier League players in the squad and the inclusion of the wonder kid, Dijon Whisper Richards. Many are pleased with the inclusion of Richards, and I'm sure the man most pleased is sitting to my left. Joining us is a technical director of Phoenix All-Stars Academy and the Mona High uh, football <laughs> program, Craig Butler. Craig, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Mag Zone once again. How are you? I gather you are coming from the beach. It's really hot. I mean, must have been a good time you were having. Yes, we're entertaining some Premier League scouts from the England again with some more of our players. So we took them out on the boat. Yeah, you know what, Craig, I was planning on throwing you some easy questions and then getting into the harder stuff, but I'm not sure how much time we're actually going to have. So let me get right into it. This debate about whether Whisper should have been named to the Reggae Boy squad. Personally, I was surprised that it was even a conversation. Did it strike you by surprise? One, um, and did it surprise you as well that coach Hal Grimson had to be defending this decision? Well, I think that Jamaicans on a whole, they've always tried to hold back young players. You know, when I was a player, they used to say, little boy, you know, must sit down on bench and watch big man play. And um, we have not pushed the youth forward, especially if the talent is good enough. Sir Alex Ferguson once said, if you're good enough, then you're old enough. And I don't think that we should be questioning Sir Alex. Um, and we shouldn't be questioning the Premier League clubs in England and the, the recruiters either. Because if they can come, Newcastle, Chelsea, come and recruit Whisper, not for the academies, but for the first team. And I was with Joe Shields at the semifinals of the Premier League. And he, he, he understood why Whisper, I didn't want Whisper to play in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Because although we have the speed and we have power, the technical side of the game is not there. The players are not capable of using both feet, playing both sides of the pitch, adapting and moving off the ball. A lot of the technical training for these players are not there from their young. So what ends up happening is that you get dragged up. And if you really think about it, our football system in Jamaica is designed to drag players up. From your playing in prep school, you're playing in competitions. You go to high school, you're playing under 14 and Manning Cup. Then you go directly from there into the Premier League. There is no point at which people are focusing on the development of the player in a holistic manner. It is more about, let's see how we can win games, you know? So, for example, the, the two strikers that we had, they had equal opportunity as Whisper to impress, in fact, more to impress in the Trinidadian games, because mm -hmm. they both were there. Um, unfortunately, Whisper was the best player. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Whisper played against Qatar a full 90 minutes and that shows that whatever we are doing at Phoenix is fitter than the players that are playing in the, at that level. So for me, um, I'm quite pleased with him. I'm quite pleased for him to join his big brother and trailblazer Leon Bailey. And I'm quite pleased for Jamaica and the coach that a step is in the right direction. It could have, Andrew Price could have gone worse. He could have said, um, He's, um, he's an ordinary player, like Vin Blaine. I'm sure these two guys will always prove us correctly. Yeah, yeah. In, in defense of Andrew Price, though, because I also got the impression um, that Andrew Price understood why Wisper was in the squad, um, but he was also in a position where I think as a Premier League coach, maybe he felt a need to defend the Premier League in, in some way. Because I, I didn't get the impression that he was wholesale saying Whisper was not good yeah, enough yeah, to Craig, be he, in the He squad. did suggest that the Premier League coaches and infrastructure has to work harder to make the players better. He did say that, which in effect was some level of admission that he recognizes that there are shortcomings in the, in the Premier League. Well, while you're saying that, I distinctly heard him say that these two players should have been included and that a while a, while a player is not playing in competition um, should be included over them. Mm. So no matter how you want to pretty top or try to revitalize him, he did say it and he was wrong. 
Mm. And Whisper proves him wrong every time. And tomorrow, if that boy touches a pitch, I guarantee you he's the most competitive person. Only one other person is as competitive as him. And we all know his name, LB. Right? <laughs> so if um, he touches a pitch tomorrow, yeah. you're going to see quality. And one of the things that these two boys have from their young is love of country. They love Jamaica. Yeah? If money was the option, Whisper would be in Qatar right now. Mm. He's here for Jamaica. And we should appreciate and be proud of him and Leon for that because they both had the options. Yeah. Mm. L let's talk about that squad. I think many agree that on paper, it probably mm. is one of the best squads the reggae boys have put together. How do you see it? Absolutely. I mean, how often do you get players from Everton, West Ham, um, Chelsea, um, Aston Villa, Fulham on the same pitch? Yeah. Um, I think that we, we I, what was really encouraging for me was that the coach tried to press in, in the game against it's Jordan, Jordan yeah. Yeah? which is what I've been, I've been telling people we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to create more chances mm -hmm. than the opponent and outscore our opponents. Mm -hmm. Instead of not wanting to lose, we should be seeking to win. Yeah. Yeah? And that's what the problem has always been with Jamaica. We play side, side back, we look at passes, and our, our midfielders and defenders look up, look at the attacking players, and see somebody close to them, put their heads back down and play a safe pass while not taking the risk. And we need to take those risks because when you have, at the professional level, an international level, 11 people on each side on the pitch, nobody's going to be ultimately free and wide open. Yeah. Give him the ball. That's why he has skills. That's why he's put there in that position I, to make things happen. I, I think Brent Sancho just said that when we interviewed him previewing the Gold Cup a short while ago, that the Jamaica team needs to play more direct football, go at goal, which resembles a lot of what you just said. We have to use our weapons. We have weapons. Yeah. We have weapons, unbelievable weapons. Speed, tenacity, skill, two-footedness. Powerful. Michael Antonio is a beast. Yeah. Get those balls down the wing, cross them in, have him finish. Have people try to mark him, Cotin and Leon and Whisper and Demarai and Bobby whip them at goal. How do you mean? This is the best Jamaican team in, in quite some time. It's a dangerous ploy though, um, that pressing game that you speak about. And we saw it in the Jordan fixture where, yes, we tried to press. But you could also see that as a unit, it's not something that we are accustomed to or that the unit doesn't necessarily understand. And quite often we were left open at the back. Jordan was able to take advantage of it. And it can be dangerous to do that consistently in a tournament where you haven't had the, the, the type of ideal preparation. No. 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 I must disagree with you. That's fine. The games that you saw yes. were not the full squad. True. The people that are going to be playing is a Leon Bailey that is used to pressing in the English Premier League. Demaragher used to press in the English Premier League. Mikel Antonio used to press in the English Premier League. And Whisper, your forwards. Your forwards. The forwards. Th those, are all your, those are but, all your forwards. But also men. look at the back line. Yes. Look at the back line. And look who's in the e goal. Ethan Pinnock won't be there. Yes, but... At least not for the first But game. Damien will be there, yeah? And Mariapa will be there, who has played several games uh, across with experience. Mar Mariapa is to... also 36, though, and, and we saw in that game against Jordan that as the game went on, clearly he's not the Mariapa of old. Clearly he still but has you... the understanding of the game, but not the fitness. But you have Bernard, mm -hmm. you have um, the Russell, mm -hmm. yeah? All of them can transition. What's important is to push the team all the way up the pitch so that you have a block, yeah. yeah, high up the pitch. And we have Andre Blake, who is an exceptional sweeper-keeper. Anything coming over him can come out and deal with it. So you have confidence in this unit, even... They're going to beat even... the U.S. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't have confidence. I know they're going to beat them. And the rest of Jamaica, you all need to get behind this national team and believe... You see those two boys that you're seeing on your screen? If somebody didn't believe, they wouldn't be where they are today. Mm -hmm. We as a nation need to start believing in ourselves and believing in our national team and inspiring them to go forward, push them on. You have no idea how powerful energy is. Yeah. One of the criticisms is that the, the midfield lacks creativity. Okay. If you have 
five guys, right? Yes. If I was the coach, yes. either Leon or Bobby would be in that attacking midfield role, that second striker role. Okay. Yeah? So you will have creativity. Just get the ball to either of the three points of attack. Yeah. The midfield, centre attacking midfield, left wing or right wing. And then you have whisper. When he start or he comes off the bench, things are not going to go downhill when you make changes with yeah. the squad. Yeah. It's going to continue the same pressure or further up the line. And that's what we need. That's what we've always needed. And I'm proud of Coach Al yeah. You know, whether he plays with Spud tomorrow or not, he has gonads. Yeah. yeah? And he wants to win. And he's going to do everything to make himself win. Previous coaches in the past would be afraid to select players based off what could happen if he lost. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So he picked the players that other people in the organization would favor. Yes. Yeah? This coach. To be safe. To be safe. Mm -hmm. This coach recognizes that whether. He, if he doesn't win, his job is in trouble anyway. Mm -hmm. Says, so might as well take the best possible players he has available and go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about Hal Grimston as assistant. What do you think, in terms of formation, suits this team best? We've seen Hal Grimson employ this 4-4-2 formation. The, the suggestions have been that maybe a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2 um, or even a 4-3-3 might, be, might be, be better. At this point, if I was coaching the team, mm -hmm. it would be a 3-2-2-3, three, two, two, three, okay. yeah? which is a 3-4-3 three, three yes. with a Brazilian box. With two holy midfielders, two attacking midfielders that get the freedom to roam and go. Yes. However... And the two attacking midfielders would be, would be who? A, probably a Leon and a Bobby Reid. Okay. Yeah? And, and, in and front then you have two them? solid, and then in front of them a Mikel Antonio. A Demarai Gray, okay. you understand, maybe a Whisper or someone else, one of the other powerful wingers going forward. So you have a full attacking force, and then you have two solid holding midfielders behind them, and then you have three central defenders, one left, one center, and one right. But the coach doesn't play that. Yeah. Yeah? Is and the 4 4 2 the worst formation for this team? It's not necessarily the worst, but I think if he played 4 2 3 1, okay. it would be better. Okay. 4 2 3 1. So you are strong on the two holding midfielders? Always. Because we need people like, if you put a Leon or a Bobby or a Demer or even a Whisper, because Whisper can play that position too. If you put any of them in that role, mm -hmm. they need to be free. In other words, they press, but they don't have to come back all the way. Mm -hmm. And when, if you look at how the, 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 the evolution of that position, that holding midfielder came about, mm -hmm. it was when Bebeto and Romario, were in the Brazilian national team and they were great attacking players, but they didn't have the defensive strength. So they put strong defensive holding midfielders to do the work for them mm -hmm. so that they could create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what we need to be doing in our national team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, how far do you think this team can go? They'll win. The whole thing. Tomorrow? The whole thing. The goal call? Yes. Where, where's your camera? Look in that camera and say that. Hey, I never, they were win. And I'm going to tell you, Mikel, Damian, Leon, Whisper, Demarai, Bobby, the whole owner, go out there and make me proud. I believe in you. And Jamaica believe in you. Go and make us proud. No afraid of nothing. You come from the yard, we're powerful, and we fear nothing. Go for it. Yeah. Demarai Gray, world class player. Top. Does he start? Given this his is, limited time in the second. If you start Demarai Gray, if you start Leon, if you start Whisper, if you start Bobby, yeah, and Mikel Antonio and Shamar, mm -hmm. that's, that's six players that deserve to start. Okay. Yeah? So start four and bring on two. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look on it, you go and get the results. Yeah. yeah. One of the things the coach said is that he understands mm -hmm. that whenever the starting lineup comes out, someone is going to be unhappy. Have you said anything to your boys, given the quality that is now up front in terms of how to deal with those situations where they might be the ones out of the starting lineup? No, I don't have to say anything to, to Leon or Whisper. They know. Phoenix blood, you know? Phoenix can never die, never give up, never back down. When you get your time, take care of business. That's it. We don't have to say anything more. If you don't play, if you don't start, you do, it, you do your job when you go there, mm. yeah? As a 17 year old for Whisper to got, get this far, yeah. I'm proud of him. And I know if he gets more chances, just look at it, he has never failed. 
Yeah. Mm. He's not failed in any game that he has played in. That's why it really bothers me that Andrew Price would have the to think that you could even compare what Whisper is doing. Do you know that the coach called in the Premier League strikers mm -hmm. and Whisper to a training session? Yes. And do you know that Whisper was the most accurate with both feet in all the tests that he did? In fairness, the coach has said even while they were on the camp um, in Austria that Dijon Richards was very impressive in training. Mm -hmm. And from what I saw in both games when he came on against Jordan mm -hmm. and in the 90 minutes that he played against Qatar, he had very good games. There is yeah. absolutely no doubt about it. And don't get me wrong, Lance and Craig, like you, I was quite surprised, and I think Coach Hal Grimson was surprised as well, mm -hmm. when the question was even put to him yes. in the press conference. After all that the kid did. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what he created against Qatar. Yeah. Pick up the ball, dribble, free kicks, <clears throat> two th excellent through passes for Shemar Nicholson to put yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Creating the pass for the, for the penalty. And you're still arguing with him? It, it also said a lot to me that someone like a, a, a Bobby Reid would allow him um, whisper to be taking the free kicks, yes. um, which I found quite interesting. It, it, is, it well, is obvious to anyone looking on that Dejon Richards is an extraordinary talent. He, he's not, I, I wouldn't even say he's above average. He's extraordinary in his talent. So I don't think that there should be any bars holding him back. Well, I think I, the coach needs to, 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 to give him as much well, I'll tell opportunity you as possible. What me, people may not know is that after every training session, Whisper runs back-to-back -back six 400 meters. The training that they've gotten at Phoenix, they can be tired. They're technically super. Joe Shields, the chief recruiter at Chelsea, came down, watched our training sessions, and he, he selected five more players to go. Whisper at Phoenix training is normal. He's one of many super talents. So what we need to do is to, I'm not saying, you don't have to like me, mm -hmm. but I did the work for you already. I went for 10 years into Europe, learned how Bayern Munich operate, Genks operate, Ajax operate, took the best practices of everything and brought it back and merged it with our track training that we have. Yeah. Utilize it for the advancement of the other players. Mm -hmm. Take the manual and go. Can I ask you a question? Would you agree that there are many Jamaicans who just don't like you, Craig Butler. I would agree that there are many, many people in England who also don't like Sir Alex Ferguson. That doesn't make him any less of a super talent. So you agree that there are many Jamaicans who don't like you? Anyone in history mm -hmm. who has not gone with the tide, who has stood up and effected positive change, mm -hmm. has been hated. Nelson Mandela. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Jesus Christ, and none like this. Do, do, do you think? Look at that. Do, do you think, Everybody, yeah. I, I don't want you troublemakers. To I don't want you to blaspheme here. So let, 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 let me let me jump in. Do you think the fact that many individuals don't like Craig Butler the person is taking away from your club, Phoenix Academy, and what you have done is impacting the type of recognition that you should be receiving or that your club should be receiving? Phoenix is ranked number one in the region by FIFA. Phoenix Sports Management is ranked number 19 in the world as a sports management company. We recognize the fact that Jamaica's football mm -hmm. has been corrupt for some time. Yeah? And players have been put into the national team based off the positions that their club owners hold in the JFF. Yeah? The technical director of Harborview Football Club was also the technical director of the national football team, Villa Blaine, mm -hmm. when he said that Leon Bailey is an ordinary player. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The, te the, the chairman of the technical committee, Rudolf Speed, is also Cavalier's coach and owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And he also said Whisper is nothing special. Yeah? Mm. He said it publicly, so it's not something I'm making up. Today, they're playing. You know why they're playing? Because mm -hmm. I didn't stop fighting for them. Mm. If I ever gave up. You know the hurtful thing about all of this is, what about those players that don't have a Craig Butler to fight for them? <clears throat> How many talents have been thrown to the wayside because they don't play for those clubs? But guess what happened? 
the rules are changing in England. Mm. You can now sign a player at 17 and you don't need national caps. Dolly House mashup. Dolly House. The Dolly House <coughs> mashup. Can I ask you a question though, Craig? Because when Jamaica qualified for the World Cup in 1998, <coughs> the nucleus of the squad that got to the World Cup, not the team that ended up going to the World Cup, would have been locally based, playing local Premier League football. And they were good enough to get Jamaica to the qualifying. What has changed so dramatically that we are picking a 23-man squad now and no player based locally is good enough to get into the team? Outside of the Phoenix Academy, is it that no local coaching platform or academy is doing a good job in developing players? Because as I said, Whitmore, Peter Cargill, Durant, Tati Brown, Lidwell Dixon, Warren Bart were all locally based players playing Premier League football and they were good enough to propel Jamaica with the addition of the Fitzroy Simpsons and Paul Hall and Dion Burton. <clears throat> but at the moment, as we speak, the JPL isn't providing that. Well, when you look at even the, it's got, gotten worse. Yeah, It has gotten worse. Yeah, because now you don't have much, you don't have Sid Bartlett anymore. You don't have much developmental competitions. Many teams are not having under 17, under 15, under 13 coming up on a consistent basis. Yeah, in the past <clears throat> that would happen. And now you don't have local coaches that are at that level either. You had the David Hunt and the Mark Mendels of the past who would really be putting in a lot into the development so of the players. David Hunt and Mark Mendel were better coaches than the coaches who are coaching in Premier League football now? Absolutely. But, but could it also be, guys, that it's just a, a, a yeah, simple case of let, your best local players don't stay in Jamaica and therefore are not in the Premier League? Yes, well, that's one a factor. Of the, other, the other factor is, is that, <coughs> but when I say that they're better, I don't mean not necessarily a tactically. I'm talking about when the competition is done, what does Andrew Price do? He's done with, with, with Humble Lions and he goes on. Uh, uh, we don't know what. Well, are you telling us that as a fact? I'm telling you an average. Of oh. An average when the competition is finished, mm -hmm. there's no immediate training. Phoenix trains 11 and a half months a year. Mm -hmm. David Walker Hunt trained Medhaven consistently all through. Phoenix was born through Medhaven. I am a product of David Hunt. Yeah. Yeah? I will continue in his name. Mm -hmm. And the fact of it is, is that. Because of Leon, before Leon, we didn't have a lot of players playing in mainland Europe. Mm -hmm. Because we went as pioneers into Europe and they saw what could happen, other people started to get opportunities. Shamar Nichols, um, um, Tyreek McGee, yeah. now um, Tyreek Ziminis. People are getting more opportunities and people are looking more. And we're pushing more people into that area. If you're good enough and you really develop properly, you get that chance. Unfortunately, the, the, the level of com the amount of competition has dropped, and that was all we used to have, mm -hmm. right? That has dropped, and the development has dropped, and the recognition of the academies is, is almost as if they look at the academies that are coaching with this thing. You know, instead of supporting them and including them, mm -hmm. they're blocking them. Yeah. So they're not being allowed to play in the competitions. Do you know that Phoenix has not been allowed? or invited to any local competitions. Mm. None. Not from U13 all the way up. Mm. None. Craig, we're going to have to talk about this another day. We are out of time. We could chat to you all day, but um, we never seem to have enough time when you're on. We go to a break on the Sportsmax Zone, interactive, including the nominees for the Sportsmax class moment coming up. <laughs>